Hey guys, Ms. Trujillo here. Um, we are now on chapter three um, in our weather patterns unit. Um, we are moving on um, to our chapter three question, which is why did the most recent storm in Galetown have the greatest amount of rain? You know that Galetown has experienced an increase in the amount of rain. In the last two chapters, you learned about how the lake and temperature affected the amount of rain. Today, you'll begin to consider one claim we have not yet discussed that wind affects the amount of rain. In this lesson, you're gonna complete activities to familiarize yourself with how wind behaves before using the weather pattern simulation. Um, so jumping in right now um, to the warm up. All right, so remember the claims below our ideas we're considering about why the rainfall in Gale Town has become severe. The lake that was built near Galetown caused it to have more um, rainstorms. Warmer weather caused Galetown to have more rainstorms and stronger winds caused Galetown to have more severe rainstorms. Recently, you created models and wrote short arguments for the citizens of Galetown explaining how the lake and recent higher temperatures could be contributing to the town's severe storms. We've talked about the lake and the warmer weather and now we're gonna focus on the last claim. Let's start by thinking about wind. So what is wind? I mean, think about, think about, you know, when you're outside and it's blowing, but what is it? Is it, is it air? Is it energy? What is wind? And then how do you think that could relate to severe rainstorms? So something that I notice um, living in Denver um, is that every single time we get any type of weather change, there is a change in the wind. So I'm wondering if wind, which I think is energy, um, is put into a place it can cause severe rainstorms. I don't know. Let's find out. All right, so um, unfortunately, I do not have um, syringes with me. Um, I tried to, to see if we had some lying around here in the house somewhere, um, maybe hoping that, um, you know, there was an old like medicine um, dispenser. Um, kids Tylenol usually has types of syringes. Um, and so a syringe, and actually, um, so it, it, it's like a little plunger that, you know, you take, you take the plunger part out and it fills with, with liquid or air in this case, um, if it were empty. And then when you push down on the plunger, whatever's inside comes out. Um, so, um, you know, when we, when we pull that plunger out, right it opens up and it gets some space for, for air to come in. You can't see the air. You, um, you can't feel the air coming in, but it's definitely there because we're surrounded all of air. Um, and remember that all air has water vapor in it. Okay. And if you put your finger on the tip of the syringe, so let's pretend this is my syringe, right? If I put my finger here and then I pressed down here where the plunger was, that plunger is not going to go in. Well, why, why isn't that plunger going to go in? Why isn't it going to go further? Now, and you can sometimes just push super duper hard and maybe, just maybe, you can get it to release. But because the air has nowhere to go, right, because your finger is blocking its exit, it just feels super duper tight. And then when we remove our finger, what ends up happening is that the plunger goes in whoop, very quickly. All right, so wind is the movement of air in a particular direction. So I thought it was energy and I was wrong and that's okay um, because mistakes happen and we learn from our mistakes. But wind is the movement of air in a particular direction. All right, guys, let's look at this video.
We're going to model how wind can move an air parcel. The air blowing from this fan represents wind. Right now the wind is blowing in one direction, horizontally. This balloon is filled with air and it represents an air parcel. What's going to happen if we release the air parcel and the wind? We can see that the wind moves the air parcel horizontally in the same direction it's blowing. But in the real world, wind doesn't always blow in just one direction. Let's add more fans to our model so that the wind is blowing from multiple directions. When all the fans are pointed inwards, the area in the middle represents a region. Now our model represents winds blowing into a region from all directions. Let's place the air parcel into the middle of the region. The air parcel moves vertically upwards. When winds blow toward a region from all directions, the winds can push an air parcel very high up. Now we've seen evidence that wind from one direction will move an air parcel horizontally, and winds blowing into a region from all directions can move an air parcel upwards. Okay guys, so, Think about what we just saw there. Think about, think about what we've been learning about and um, air parcels and what causes air parcels to cool, what causes air parcels to rise. And we know that air parcels um, begin their, their, their rising up when, um, when they have um, a temperature difference, when they are warmer than the air around them, and that the warmer that air parcel is, the higher it's going to rise. Well, now we're seeing stuff about wind, and wind can push an air parcel up. And all of that is, is for us to start figuring out why did the most recent storm in Dick Gale Town have the greatest amount of rain? So let's jump into the sim and see the effects that that has. Something.